Uh, Terry McCauley, uh, NBC Sunday Night Football rules analyst and a former NFL referee, kind enough to join us, give us his thoughts on the new rule change to replay. Terry, thanks for joining us. Uh, are you thumbs up, thumbs down with adding more replay? Uh, I, I got to tell you, I'm with you, Dan, and I'm, I'm pretty much thumbs down. And, you know, there's several reasons. And, and you know, philosophically, from an officiating standpoint, I, I really believe these types of calls – need to be made in real time on the field, and you leave it there. I I get that that's probably old school now, and they've moved on from that. Mm -hmm. But on a more real level, I, too, am concerned about stoppages. Uh, I I know we have, outside of two minutes, the coach's challenge that will limit that. But how many more of them are they going to use now that this is part of the review process? You know, are we going to get to two and three by each coach every single game? And then you get under two minutes. Yeah. And, and I was listening to you, and you, you nailed it. How many of these contested passes in the two-minute drill are going to need to be stopped to see if the defender was two frames early when he hit the receiver? Take me through the process of, in the final two minutes, who is going to tell you if you're on on the uh, field and a call is missed, how will you find out that this needs to be or will be reviewed if you're the head official? The, the replay official is going to buzz down. I, I say buzz down. That's the old Peterson. He's going he's gonna to radio down and tell the officials, tell the referee to stop the game and the play is under review. Just like any other incomplete pass or any other stepped out of bounds or touchdown or whatever, the the replay official is going to stop the game under two minutes or in overtime to review whether it was pass interference or not. Is there anything positive in this? Well, sure. I mean, just like the, the, the former, any other replay process, you don't ever want to have a call that costs the team a game. I, I understand the need to, to get those right. And this is, you know, that this is going to hopefully fix those. But when you start looking at, at every play, is there pass interference or not? You know, I, I heard my, my good friend Mike Florio talk, talk earlier about clear and obvious egregious. Yeah. I, I don't see that as being the case here. And, and we have a perfect example in the Super Bowl just before the game-clinching interception by New England, there was a pass to Brandon Cooks in the end zone. In real time, nobody thinks this is pass interference, not even a, not even a blip yeah. of a thought. Well, then they go to slow motion replay, and Tony Romo accurately and correctly says, oh, there's a little arm grab there just before the ball gets there. Well, is that a foul or not? Is, you know, in real yeah. time, it wasn't. It's never going to be called in real time. Yeah. But my understanding is the committee looked at that, and that, is, that will be called. If you see that, that is enough to be called pass interference by replay. Do you think the NFL talked to officials before they made this change? I, I, I think they had some conversations as the process was developing. But, but then you got, to, you got to the meeting yesterday, and it all seemed to happen based on, on coaches. Uh, I, I think they, they pushed it through. It's what they wanted. And, and the, owners, you know, the owners fell in line. So I don't think there was this thorough thought process once the momentum got started yesterday. I, I know you listen to the show, so you know how I feel about these all-star crews when we get to the playoffs. I don't want that because I want you with your family, with the group that you worked with every single week. Therefore, egos don't get in the way. Somebody's going to say to you, hey, Terry, I think, I think we missed this one. Or I think you missed that one. I don't know why the other officials didn't weigh in because they could see that play. You could hear that play. That was helmet to helmet and pass interference. Why didn't somebody say... Hold on here, huddle up. I think we got a problem here. Because three officials were looking at that in real time, and they believe there wasn't a foul. Mm. They, and, and, and I think there, there's a systemic problem there, because, and I think it developed throughout the playoffs, that it felt like officials were looking for reasons not to throw a flag. And on that play, they felt it was bang, bang, 
you know, they were looking at the con- at contact, whether it was DPI or not. I, you know, the helmet contact, I think, was, a, was, was just something that was, happened to be part of it. Yeah. But they, they felt in real time that based on their guidance from their superiors that that was a bang-bang play, it was too close to call, and it's, it was not a foul. Yeah. Um, and, and by the way, that, that has been a philosophy for years, bang-bang plays, don't frame-by-frame it. I believe that goes away now with replay. He's either early or he's not early. <laughs> he's a Terry McCauley, NBC Sunday Night Football rules analyst, former NFL official. I was also wondering this. We had J.J. Watt on in the first hour, and I said, you know, we're looking at replay, and everything is to help offense, it feels like, that here we are with the challenge, and you can overturn some, uh, uh, overturn a call, or there was no call, we're going to you know, make the call. D. Ford with a hit on Tom Brady wouldn't have been reviewable, I'm guessing uh, there, but will it, will it now? No. Uh, and, and that was one of the proposals that, and, and this is probably the most surprising thing of all of this, Dan, is that I felt they were going to put player safety fouls into this category of reviewable plays first, because I, and I'm even for that. I think player safety fouls, are a separate category over anything else that we look at in, in football. I can live with more stoppages to make sure we get player safety fouls correct. But that was not approved. They, they went right to the DPI OPI thing, uh, and, and it just surprised me. I mean, player safety has been such a huge uh, part of the NFL culture, protecting that over the last few years. I thought that was a shoe in to be honest with you. What role does gambling play in this new rule or the, the the I guess this being brought out and more uh, replay from an officiating standpoint none at all I, I just it, it just has no effect on anything officials ever do we, it's it's completely in our mind you know all the officials I've ever known we don't even talk it's not even discussed it's it's not even part of the equation we're just trying to go out and do our job but as far as from the NFL perspective, well, they have a they have a different viewpoint, and I think they are looking at, at it from a long term. They're doing everything to make sure they believe they're doing everything they sure, make sure that that there isn't they aren't subject to that accusation. Did you guys ever? It's hard not to know this. Um, the point spreads on games that you were doing. I I, I didn't. I can't ever remember even paying attention to it. I mean, you knew if it was a mismatch, you know, if, you know, if you were playing New England against uh, Arizona or whatever, that, yeah. that you were a mismatch. But as far as point spreads, that's that was that was always irrelevant. Terry, great to catch up with you again. Hope you're enjoying the off season there, and uh, we'll look forward to Sunday night football. I am. Thanks very much, Dan. That's uh, Terry McCauley. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV or download the Dan Patrick Show app.